We build offset smokers, open fire grills, pretty much anything that we can put a fire in, we're gonna try to build it. All right. The smoker is the foundation of any good barbecue restaurant. Matt and Caleb Johnson of Mill Scale Metalworks have been building custom smokers for some of the biggest names in barbecue out here in Austin, Texas. So you've thought through the whole barbecuing process in customizing how you're building this, essentially. When Caleb and I designed this specific unit, we were thinking about sharing meals with our family and our friends and thinking about you know, having something in the backyard. One of our issues with a lot of the barbecue pits that we saw was that the firebox was too small. So we like to build almost an oversized firebox. The big reason is, is that we wanted to have a firebox that will accept full standard size logs. And that way you don't have to use chunks, you don't have to have add one more step. And once the, the logs are loaded in the firebox, it transfers into the cook chamber. The smoke's gonna enter the cook chamber and it's gonna come out on a smoke stack located on, on, on this side of the cook chamber. So who are buying these smokers primarily? Are these like pit masters, restaurant owners, barbecue enthusiasts? <laughs> Our, our larger ones, like such as like the 1,000 gallons yeah. and some of the 500s, a lot of times that's going to like a restaurant. Right. Sometimes it is going to an enthusiast. And then you see uh, some of the smaller ones, some guys want to use them in competition. And okay. some people just, you know, they want to win the Super Bowl, they want to win 4th of July, they want to be the guy to show up and yeah. just have the show best off. smoker out there. So you haven't welded before, right? Never. Great, this is gonna be perfect. So basically it's a wire-fed machine. So there's a ground clamp here. It basically finds the steel and travels up to the material that you're working with. Once we strike an arc with the machine, the wire is fed through the lead and it almost acts like a filler material that joins and bonds the two pieces together. You know when you sew, you kind of pin it and you set it yes. first and then you run your, your stitching? Yeah. It's kind of the same way. So I'm, I'm not even gonna whip it. I'm just gonna just kind of kiss, okay. kiss it. I guess I have to do this now. So I was just like right here, I hit the button and I just dragged it down. Perfect, that, that was perfect. All right, so we're gonna build a cooking grate and uh, this is what the meat is actually gonna be cooked on. Right. Throw on a little face shield. We got earplugs in. Yeah. So I'm on the side that's gonna get cut. Not too bad, right? Do you want to give it a try? No. <laughs> I'll trade your spot. This scares the shit out of me. Why am I always holding a power tool? <laughs> You're going to do great. So I'm here. Oh my god. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we are gonna cut the steel for the plancha. Okay. Plancha is used in a lot of South American cooking methods. In Texas, you could call it like a flat top or, or a griddle. Our plancha design is designed for our open fire grills. It's one of my favorite cooking methods. It's very simple and yeah. it, it has a nice heat to it. We're going to cut this with an oxyacetylene torch. We're going to create a hot flame that is gonna melt the metal. And then we're gonna use this lever to shoot out a burst of oxygen to basically blow through that hot metal and that's what's going to be the actual cutting oh method opposed God. to like the grinding wheel where you use like friction cutting it. Right. This is basically going to liquefy the metal and then we're going to blow hot air to uh, separate the metal. This seems complicated. <clears throat> this one's going to be a little bit tricky on, uh, okay. on the application. You started making planchas after Correct. smokers. Correct. That came later. Correct. Caleb and I grew up grilling. Our mom's from Portugal. So we, could, we had a lot of fish, we had a lot of vegetables, and um, you know, being in Texas, we were able to combine you know, the, the tradition of barbecue, but also seeing how other people eat and cook around the world. Yeah. And, and uh, there's no end in sight because we're constantly fascinated and impressed with how people are cooking. Yeah, and this allows you to do different things in the smoker and on. Yeah, sharing coals from the firebox, yeah. from the smoker to the, the, the uh, open fire grills. You could um, reverse sear on a smoker, finish it off on the grill. Right, right. Uh, finishing sausages off. So the, 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 the combination is a, a really beautiful marriage between the yeah. two cooking methods.
The smoker is built. What needs to happen next? So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna season it. Is this kind of similar to seasoning a cast iron pan? We need to seal the metal? Absolutely, that, that's what we're going okay. for. And we're gonna do that by putting some type of a fat or an oil. In this situation, we're gonna be using a beef tallow and we're gonna wipe it down and then we're gonna heat it up. The heat is going to help evaporate some of the oxygen and some of the moisture that's in the steel and then the fat is gonna bond with the steel and it's gonna create a really nice like non-stick rust prevented uh, surface. Okay. And that looks great. All right, let's get this thing going. Okay, so I'm just gonna light some kindling. What kind of wood are we using? Post oak. Oak. That's pretty commonplace in Texas. What are you cooking today and are you doing it direct or indirect? We're gonna put a, a whole gator on the cross and then we're gonna do I have never had alligator. Well, ho hopefully you enjoy it. I've never it. seen anything cooked on a cross. I, I haven't seen anyone do a cross alligator situation. <laughs> Wow. Gators don't have any fat on them, or they have very little fat on them. One of the big things that you, you're doing when you're doing a low and slow cook, or smoking, or cooking over fire, is you're trying to render out fat, and that's kind of what moistens up the meat. We're gonna actually kind of add fat to this guy. Basically, we're gonna walk over there, okay. and this end is gonna go into that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> what a day. Awesome day. Tastes good. Tastes like chicken. Tastes like yeah. Louisiana. Oh my god. <laughs>